The Terminator gained cult status immediately after its release. Terminator 2 Judgment Day is considered by many to be even better, more interesting and more elaborate than the first part. Alas, no other film in the franchise has been able to replicate their success, but even though each new part turns out to be worse than the previous one, for some reason they continue to be filmed, disappointing the audience over and over again. How did an action movie with a huge fan turn into mediocrity? How does Cameron owe his career to Schwarzenegger? And who screwed up the most in trying to revive the franchise? It is about movies, and today we're going to talk about the ups and downs of a beloved story. Many legends about the Terminator's first part contradict themselves. The most ridiculous of them is that supposedly Cameron, not a very popular director at that time, approved Arnold Schwarzenegger for the lead role. But everything was another way. After the failure of Piranha 2, Cameron was desperate to offer the Terminator script to some Hollywood studio, but no one wanted to work with him. Some studios were interested in the idea and agreed with the script, but only on one condition. Other successful directors should work on it. As a result, Orion Pictures took over the project. The shooting was budgeted at $6.5 million, but only because Arnold Schwarzenegger agreed to play the lead role. The actor liked the script, and later, the director himself. If Cameron did not please Schwarzenegger, then most likely we would not be talking about the Terminator now. It simply would not exist. But we were lucky. Arnie, who by that time was a rising star after the success of Conan the Barbarian, got along with the director, and he promoted Cameron to the studio as a director, rendering a great service to his career. Perhaps if not for Schwarzenegger, we would have not seen the Terminator in such masterpieces of cinema as Titanic and Avatar. In Hollywood, Arnold Schwarzenegger is known for his dedication on set, but also for being quite selective. He is ready to do anything if he is confident in the idea and the director. Arnie did not leave the studio a choice, and it was forced to come to terms with his choice of director. Some scenes had to be filmed in very extreme conditions. The fact is that according to the law, it is customary to agree on each shooting in the exterior, on the street, in the park, on the road, in general, in any public place, as well as pay for the shooting. It is a kind of rental location, the Terminator film crew constantly violated this rule and did not pay a cent for all street shooting, managing to shoot everything necessary and leave before the cops arrived at the crime scene. By and large, no one expected the success of the Terminator. They generally wanted to suspend James Cameron from work and did not allow him to film part of the scenes. There were not enough funds for something, or they deliberately did not give money for something. Interestingly, the picture was released almost without advertising, and although Schwarzenegger defended the film and tried to get advertising support from the producers, they did not really listen to him. He's an actor, so let him do all kinds of acting and no more. Although it was in the first place, the lack of an advertising campaign was the reason why Terminator was not far behind the documentary Terror in the Isles, in terms of fees in its first week. Rumors saved the film. The audience liked the Terminator so much that in the second week, it grossed even more money than in the first. As a result, the first part grossed $78 million worldwide, with the original $6.5 million. No one expected such a triumph, including Orion Pictures, which focused on a maximum of $15 million and called the Terminator a trash horror movie. The main function of the film was originally to fill holes in the box office between more promising premieres, The Purple Rose of Kiero and The Cotton Club, which eventually failed at the box office, fell under the promising category. After the Terminator's release, the entire film crew quickly climbed the career ladder. Fame flew instantly to Cameron and Schwarzenegger. Just a few weeks after the release, everyone started talking about the need to shoot a sequel. How many parts of the cult franchise have you watched, and which one do you think is the best? Write in the comments. The budget was planned to be doubled in comparison with the first part. On the big screens, the second part of The Terminator was supposed to be released in 1987. However, Cameron was in no hurry to start working on it, and Arnie did not want to work without his beloved director. While James was working on his other projects, the Hemdale Company, which acquired the rights to the franchise, managed to go bankrupt. When Cameron's inspiration finally returned, Arnold Schwarzenegger was working on Total Recall from Carl Pictures. The actor managed to persuade studio producers Mario Casar and Andrew Vine to buy the rights to the franchise. I'll be back. Initially, the film budget was estimated at 75 to 80 million dollars, and such an impressive amount at the time would have made the film the most expensive in history. However, this was not enough for Cameron. He was used to embodying all his most daring ideas, so the estimate of the Terminator 2 was constantly increasing and eventually reached $100 million. 
as his honorarium, Arnold Schwarzenegger received a whole plane, which he allegedly, long ago, really wanted to. However, rumors say that the actor simply avoided paying taxes on the fee. Bombastic side eye. Criminal offensive side eye. Terminator Judgment Day was released in July 1991, four years after the planned date, and stayed at the top for a whole month. Terminator bypassed the film Point Break, which was shot by Cameron's then-wife, Catherine Bigelow. Alas, competition affected their relationship, and they divorced. But soon, the film dropped to third place. It was all the fault of the comedy Hot Shots with Charlie Sheen and the action movie Double Impact with Van Damme, which took the first two positions. It is important to note that the second Terminator was released when blockbusters were just appearing and was a rare representative of its genre. In the first month since the release, it created excitement, so the audience ignored other premieres. The picture earned five times more than its original budget. Terminator grossed $500 million at the box office, with $102 million spent on it. The success of this film is even more impressive when you remember that it had an adult rating. It means that the film could become the most profitable project of 1991, even taking into account that children could not watch the movie. Only 12 years later, The Matrix Reloaded bypassed it according to the same criterion. Children were also not allowed to watch it, while the film grossed $741 million. By the way, the adult rating of The Terminator 2 did not affect sales, including toys. Everything related to the theme of the famous cyborg sold like hotcakes. No one knows how much they earned. However, it was said that the company received as much as it collected in cinemas. Receiving such success, they wanted to shoot the third part almost immediately after the release of the second. Everyone wanted it, but not the director. James Cameron was not eager to take on a continuation, arguing that the story was logically over. Schwarzenegger didn't want to film without Cameron. It did not last long because the movie star's career began to decline sharply. As we all remember, in the late 90s, Arnold Schwarzenegger expressed a desire to go into politics. All films with his participation at that time suffered a complete collapse, and a large-scale, successful project was necessary to improve his image. Well, it was impossible without favorite series. Stay here. I'll be back. When Arnold was offered to return to the franchise, he felt that the film would be a lifeline for him and accept it. But before that, Schwarzenegger decided to get a blessing from Cameron, who recommended that the actor make good money on his return. And Arnie did it. His fee cost the studio $30 million, plus the percentage of fees in cinemas. At that time, it was the largest fee in his career. And most importantly, Arnold Schwarzenegger ensured that the filming took place in California, one of the most expensive states in America. Other states provide tax breaks that save a lot on film production, but not California. In this regard, the studio spent a lot of money on the Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, and the film's budget turned out to be the largest in history at that time. But the problem was not only in the high costs of production, the film was also unlucky at the stage of selecting a director. None of the well-known directors with good reputations wanted to take on the film. Schwarzenegger personally approached Ridley Scott with an offer, but he refused. After that, Arnie offered the director's chair to John McTiernan, but even without the Terminator 3, he had enough movie failures, and the director tried his best to rehabilitate Rollerball. As a result, Jonathan Mostow accepted the offer. He worked on successful films U571 and Breakdown, which helped the director to climb the career ladder. But on the third Terminator, the stairs obviously took a wrong turn. In his interviews, Mostow repeatedly mentioned that the Terminator destroyed his directing career. For several years after the film's release, he received only low-quality, low-budget project offers. However, The Terminator was only the beginning of a slow decline in Mostow's directorial prospects. Three years later, Mostow filmed The Surrogates with a bearded Bruce Willis. The film failed at the box office and took away the director's good reputation. Edward Furlong was the next problem in filmmaking. For a long time, he wanted to return to the role of the mature John Connor. In 2001, the company was forced to terminate the contract with him and urgently look for a replacement. There were no official comments, but they say that the reason for Furlong's, quote, break with the studio was his problems with alcohol, which the producers could not influence in any way. The difficulties did not end there. At the beginning of the filming, the script had to be partially changed. Mostel felt that actress Sophia Bush, originally cast as Kate Brewster, looked too young and comical on screen. Claire Danes replaced her but she had a hard time because she had no time to prepare. According to Jonathan Mostow, the situation even helped the movie since the confusion Danes constantly experienced on the set perfectly reflected the state of her character. In the story, she spontaneously takes part in the adventure. 
But we can definitely say that Schwarzenegger had fun on the set. He even decided to give money to the film's production. The actor liked the chase scene so much that he demanded to add a moment where a tower crane demolished half of the building. The studio could no longer allocate funds for such scenes, so Schwarzenegger paid for this event at his own expense. He invested a million and a half dollars for an effect that lasted only a few seconds in the frame. The third Terminator, with a budget of $200 million, was released in 2003. Of course, the film did not break into the box office, sweeping all competitions out of its way. But it's also impossible to say that it failed. In America, the film received $73 million in its first week, but in the second week, Pirates of the Caribbean started at the box office, which suddenly, even for its creators, overshadowed all competitors. Plus, at the same time as the Pirates, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was released, which led to the fact that Terminator jumped from silver second place to bronze third. There is an assumption that the Terminator could become more successful and profitable if not for the adult rating. Interestingly, getting rid of it was not so difficult. Just cut out a couple of uncomfortable scenes and, in some places, do without real details. As a result, the film managed to earn $443 million with a $200 million budget. The Terminator would have been clearly cheaper if not for the aforementioned hefty sum paid to Schwarzenegger for his work and the high budget spent on the Californian exterior. If the actors' appetites were lower, the film budget would have been around $140 million, which was the norm for blockbusters of that time. And therefore, the increased costs of filming immediately affected the movie's success, and they immediately changed their minds about shooting a direct sequel. She'll be back. Terminator Salvation released only in 2009. It failed to rehabilitate the franchise and the former glory of the franchise. Although many believe that this particular part is the best after the first two, it is the whole irony of the film series with the release of each new part, each previous one no longer seems so terrible. Although at the time of release, you can't immediately say so. Terminator Salvation is the only part of the franchise that has not received approval from Cameron, although he, in a sense, had a hand in its creation. James attached Sam Worthington to one of the lead roles. For what, you ask? Well, the Avatar premiere was just around the corner. It was simply necessary for Worthington. By that time, was already a more or less recognizable actor. McGee, the Charlie's Angels producer and screenwriter, took the director's chair in Terminator 4. As with his predecessor Jonathan Mostow, McGee's career went downhill after working on the famous franchise. It's a true curse. Later, he released a couple of not particularly distinguished films. This means war and three days to kill. Then, he hid somewhere on television where he shot mediocre series and movies. During the filming, everything was not as good as we would like. Christian Bale, who played John Connor, made things difficult for the entire crew because of his ambition. Initially, according to the script, the story revolved around Marcus, and John Connor appeared only for a few minutes at the end of the movie. Bale was considered just for the role of Marcus, but he flatly refused because he wanted to become a cult hero. Therefore, the script abruptly began to be rewritten for him where they added significant scenes with him to the plot. In addition, there was an incident with the scenario leaking to the network. Because of this, the ending had to be changed. Even though the film received a PG-13 rating, the teen audience did not save the movie. The fourth Terminator grossed even less money than the third film, with a budget of $200 million. It managed to earn only $371 million. At that time, it was the most expensive non-studio film in Hollywood. Many justify the failure of the fourth Terminator precisely by saying that an independent company failed to cope with its duties in promotion due to an insufficient experience. Warner and Sony engaged in distribution did not do their best, as they did not want to lose extra money. In addition, Terminator 4 was released in cinemas in parallel with Night at the Museum 2, and at the end of the first week, the adventure comedy outperformed it in fees, and a week later, the already knocked out Terminator was overtaken by the cartoon Up. Then, everything went downhill, and other people bought the franchise. I'll be back. We mention this because everyone's used to thinking that if a movie is terrible, they won't make a sequel, and if the sequel is filmed, then the movie is not so bad. But here's the thing. Each part of the Terminator was filmed by different people. Each time, a new studio took on the project in the hope that everything would change for them. Then they failed, and the franchise was bought by others who wanted to test their strength, and so on. Terminator Genesis is the most successful part in terms of distribution after Cameron's dilogy. The creators even planned to shoot a sequel and launch a trilogy, for which they managed to write draft scripts. 
However, not particularly positive reviews from both critics and ordinary viewers prevented this. The Terminator managed to break the jackpot only at the Chinese box office. This time, Alan Taylor decided to sit in the cursed director's chair. Before that, he worked on such successful projects as The Sopranos, Game of Thrones, and Thor The Dark World. However, after the filming of The Fifth Terminator, nothing more serious waited for the director. The man whose filmography includes everyone's favorite famous series now took on some cheap projects on TV. Genesis had good potential, which unfortunately was never revealed. A very strange cast prevented this, and we are not talking about the quality of their acting. For example, Lee Byung-hun is a great actor, but specifically in Genesis, he failed to play his character believably. The same thing happened to Amelia Clark. It is difficult to assume that she did not understand what character she would play. Moreover, the actress has repeatedly mentioned in an interview that she has been an ardent fan of the first two parts of The Terminator since childhood. As for the other actors, how Jay Courtney ended up in the film, we won't even ask. Jason Clark is a pretty good actor, and in most of his movies, he did an excellent job with the tasks assigned to him. But he could not with the role of the worldwide resistance leader. In general, by changing the cast and screenwriters, it would be possible to make a fairly decent movie. The Fifth Terminator grossed $440 million at the box office. It is almost three times his original budget. In the United States, however, it did not have much success and grossed only $89 million. I'll be back. What? After a vacation and bad reviews about the fourth part of The Terminator, Cameron still returned with applause to Genesis. The huge advantage of the fifth part was that after the end of the filming, some of its creators were not averse to working on a sequel. Paramount Studios even signed an agreement with 20th Century Fox to work on Terminator Dark Fate. James Cameron was indirectly involved in the creation of Dark Fate, and although he never even visited the set, he remotely gave colleagues advice. We do not know the advice, but maybe the main instruction was to ignore all the previous parts except for Cameron's dialogy. Why does the fifth Terminator ignore everything we saw in the three parts before? Only James Cameron knows. Unfortunately, the same situation happened to the actors in this part, as in Genesis, poor quality casting and extremely dubious acting. Tim Miller, an up-and-coming director who has just released the famous Deadpool, has taken on a hand in Dark Fate. Miller stated that he agreed to the Terminator because of the loud promises the creators made but did not fulfill. The casting, as we already mentioned, is rather strange. Why a 31-year-old actress plays an 18-year-old girl? The author explains everything this way. In the other part, there will be a time jump, and she must grow old, and if an 18-year-old actress plays a 40-year-old character in the next film, then this is ridiculous. Yes, but you could take two different actresses, or at least a 25-year-old who would have turned 30 by the second film. In addition, Rias also does not look like she is 40. James Cameron stated that he had almost nothing to do with the film. Yes, he just passed by. However, when Miller's rough cut was criticized in the preview, Cameron generously decided to help and make a few edits to the story. After the film's release, Miller often complained about Cameron. The director constantly made adjustments, interfered in his work, and changed everything. And Miller's ideas were rejected at the offering stage. Because of this, Miller believes that he cannot call Terminator 6 his brainchild, and the film turned out not as good as he originally created it. Among Miller's offers was the idea to make people villains since John Connor had already got all the rebels. In general, Miller and Cameron thought about this idea for a long time, but in the end, James did not accept it and almost removed John Connor from the film. The original script had scenes with Sarah and John talking about saving the world. It seemed to James that it would be technically impossible to realistically recreate John's face, which would affect the visual quality and play against the dramatic element of the plot. The sixth Terminator was not lucky with the constant changes in the release date. The film was postponed for a few months, so it did not compete with Fast and Furious, Hobbs and Shaw at the box office. But the trick still did not work. The film collected only $286 million with a budget of $186 million. Naturally, there was no talk about continuation, and the creators even stated that the Terminator needed to pause and relax. Poor Tim Miller was blamed for the failure. It never occurred to anyone to blame the actors or Cameron, but they chose the director who worked with such trifles as Deadpool, Thor The Dark World, and the credits for The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and has impressive experience working with the visual part of computer games. In addition, Cameron generally decided in advance to justify himself, saying he had nothing to do with that and did not want to work on the film. 
but he was doing it only for his friendship with Schwarzenegger and his already ex-wife at that time. Of course, we cannot accuse Arnold Schwarzenegger of anything at all. He is a legend and has the right to shake things up, albeit in a dubious project. The audience, in turn, again remembered how good was Terminator Genesis, and was even a little upset that the franchise took a break. If someone films the seventh part, then Dark Fate will seem like a good movie? Because there was a feeling that it could not be worse than the sixth part. Many fans think that Terminator's new part will be a remake. We hope that the vacation will only benefit the franchise. I'll be back. There are no fewer hopes and expectations from the restart of Transformers. The scandalous Michael Bay's brainchild, criticized by everyone, managed to blow up cinemas and earn cosmic sums. So what is the franchise's secret, and why did it quickly slide into the abyss? Click on the video that appeared on your screen and find out how the series has changed from film to film and why Bay was desperate to get rid of it. About Movies was with you. Hasta la vista, baby.